In this video, we're going to look at uh, conservation of mass with a non-uniform velocity profile. And we're going to do it primarily through an example. If we have a pipe uh, with a uniform cross-sectional area, and at section 1, some section upstream, we have a uniform velocity profile. That means that the velocity here at section 1 is equal to u, and I'll call it i hat because we're going to be formal and put x coordinate direction in, going downstream in the pipe as follows. <clears throat> at some, oh, sorry, v, I'm going to call it section one. And at some section farther downstream, um, this profile, uh, we'll discuss in later chapters why it becomes fully developed, but basically viscous forces and such make this profile become. Um, parabolic in nature. And so we're going to say that the velocity at section 2 is equal to some, um, let me make sure I get this correct here, is going to be equal to some u, and I'm going to call it u max, times 1 minus the quantity r, little r over big R squared, where um, little r is measured from the center line of the pipe and the radius of the pipe itself is big R. So um, the first thing we're going to do of course is draw ourselves a control volume and it makes sense to draw our control volume inside the pipe where the upstream and downstream sections of our profile correspond to uh, section 1 and section 2 as given. And we can write um, the conservation of mass, which we know from the Reynolds transport theorem, yet again. And we write uh, ddt of the integral in the control volume of rho dv is plus um, the integral over the control surface of rho v dotted with n hat dA equals zero. Now uh, I neglected to mention that we're considering steady flow and we're also considering incompressible flow. Incompressible flow. And so those two assumptions, the first one allows us to cross off the non-steady non term here and the second one allows us to divide through by rho because uh, it's constant everywhere and zero divided by rho is zero. So we note that the top and bottom or the, the part of the control surface that's coincident with the pipe, uh, there's no flow going across that and so therefore we can ignore that part of the control surface and so we divide up the uh, um, the control surface here represented by CS into an upstream and a downstream version uh, 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 surface at points 1 and 2 and we can write them as follows the integral over section 1 of V dotted with n hat dA <coughs> plus the integral at section 2 of V dotted with n hat dA equals 0. The first one of these is fairly straightforward. I'm going to write the, uh, for section 1, the integral of v dotted with n hat dA is just equal to, let's see, the integral over the area of v, which is u i hat, dotted with negative i hat, because the outward pointing normal points to the left in, in this case, over dA. And now we got to think for a minute what is dA for a, a, a circular pipe? Looking at the cross-sectional area of the pipe, when we integrate over the area and we have some differential element dA, we can expand that out a bit and we note that the area of that differential element is given by dR in the radial direction and R d theta in the circumferential direction. 
not just d theta, because as we move out farther and farther from the center line, this distance here gets larger proportional to r. So this integral over what we have the area here is actually a double integral, which is the integral from 0 to 2 pi in d theta, and the integral from 0 to capital R, the radius of the pipe, uh, sorry, d, r d theta, ah, r d theta, so and then we integrate in r, so basically our dA becomes r dr d theta, I dot with minus I is a minus 1, so we get a minus U here. Well, the integral of from 0 to 2 pi of d theta is theta evaluated at the endpoint, so that just gives us a 2 pi. The integral of R dr is R squared over 2, so this gives us uh, 1 half R squared, and then we have a minus U in there as well. And so altogether, the 2's cancel, and we get minus pi r squared u. This is the integral over the control surface at section 1. Well, this makes sense because the area of the control surface is pi r squared. And for a uniform velocity, we know that um, the average flow rate is just going to be equal to uh, the velocity. So we get the amount of mass flowing into the pipe is minus uh, pi r squared u. The mass flowing out of the pipe is minus pi r squared u into the, um, uh, into the pipe. Of course, you have to multiply by minus 1. Now we can do the integral at section 2. And again, I'll just write it as v hat um, v2, uh, v2 dotted with n hat integrated over dA. And that's going to be equal to the integral from 0 to 2 pi from 0 to capital R of R dr d theta times u, which is going to be um, u max times 1 minus R over capital R squared. Our velocity is in the i hat direction. Our outward pointing normal is in the i hat direction. So i hat times uh, dotted with i hat is just a 1. And so that's taken care of. Now I have to be a little more careful doing this integral. Let's say u max is a constant. And we can integrate over theta easily enough. So the first thing we get is 2 pi u max. Let's see, 1. So then we have to integrate an r. We have a 1 here, but we have to multiply that by r. So we integrate r, and we get um, r squared over 2. And that's minus, here we have an r squared times another r gives us an r cubed. So we're going to end up with um, r to the fourth over 4 capital R squared. I don't know what happened to my pen there. And that's evaluated at, I'm sorry, yeah, that's evaluated from um, 0 to capital R. And when we do that evaluation, we get 2 pi u max uh, times r squared over 2 minus r to the fourth divided by r squared is r squared over, uh, it's just r squared, and then we have a 4 in the bottom. And this together is r squared over 4. And so we end up with 1 half pi r squared u max. That's section 2. So we said that the sum of these integrals of section 1 and section 2 have to be 0. So we can write that minus pi r squared capital U plus 1 half pi r squared U max equals 0. We, can't, so we can divide through by pi r squared. And we see then that u max equals 2 times u. So that is, if we go back and look at our figure, the speed here, let me change colors, 
This, the maximum speed here, u max, is going to be twice the uniform speed here, u. And further, we know, I lost my mouse again, there we go. Further, we know that if the density is constant, we know that we can write the average flow velocity as equal to the integral over the area of V dotted with n hat dA divided by the area. Well, we just went through for section two. We just did the integral, and it ended up being one half pi r squared u max. And the area, of course, is pi r squared. But we know that one half u max is just equal to u, capital U. So the average velocity for our parabolic profile up here, the average speed of the flow, is, is the exact same as the, um, the speed of the uniform flow coming in. And that makes sense because we know that for a, uh, for a steady flow, the, the mass flow in has to equal the mass flow out, and since the density is constant, uh, then the average velocity in has to equal the average velocity out. And mathematically, um, uh, we end up with that correlation.